Welcome to this pre-recorded service. We're recording this in my home because we're not permitted to have services today in Langford Chapel and we don't have recording facilities there at the moment. But the good news is that we soon hope to have a broadband connection and we'll be able to do live services uh, when we are back in the chapel. Now to start with this evening we are going to have a grand old hymn that you will know who is on the Lord's side and this is a YouTube recording courtesy of friends at the Salvation Army. <laughs> great song isn't it 
and will be very appropriate not only for Remembrance Sunday but of course uh, for the passage of the scriptures that we're going to look at later on which is from Ephesians chapter 6. Let's begin with prayer. Our Father and our God we do thank you for the way in which through technology we can have this service. Lord we would of course much sooner be together in the chapel and we thank you for your goodness to us over the last four months when we have been able uh, to have worship there. And our Father we pray that despite the difficulties and disadvantages of this not being a live service uh, that you would move by your spirit in the hearts of preacher and those who listen alike but the Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. We thank you as we did this morning for those who laid down their lives for the freedom that we have and although that freedom is currently curtailed we look forward to a day when that will not be the case. And Father we want to thank you again for those thoughts that came to us concerning our Lord Jesus Christ and how he won a much greater victory than the man Shammah in the second book of Samuel. Lord we thank you for that great victory of Calvary and we thank you that because of that through faith in the Lord Jesus we can have eternal life. Father we pray for all the friends connected with the chapel at this time particularly for those who are not well and have uh, health problems and uh, Lord uh, especially uh, tonight uh, for one of your dear servants who uh, is a blessing to us in the chapel who is unwell at this time we pray for a restoration of health and Father we thank you that we know that we are all in your hands and we thank you that in the darkest days we have the joy of knowing the light of the world our Lord Jesus Christ and then he said to his disciples that they were to be the light of the world while he is away in the Father's presence. Lord we pray that we who know and love you may indeed be light in this dark world. We do pray our Father for our leaders at this time that they might have wisdom in dealing with the Covid situation and uh, Father we also pray for the international scene uh, particularly Lord for the confused situation in the United States we do pray especially for your people there that they may know your help Lord and uh, that they will continue uh, to point uh, to the one who reigns over all the King of Kings and Lord of Lords our Lord Jesus Christ. So Father we pray that you will help us as we think about your word tonight and we ask that your name might be glorified for it is in that precious and worthy name of the Lord Jesus that we come to you. Amen. We're going to read tonight from Ephesians chapter 6 and it's verses 10 to 20 and the title for our study is taken from some of those verses it is able to stand so the reading from the new king james version is ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 20. finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armour of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day 
and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints, and for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, but in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And the Lord will bless the reading of his word. Our heading for tonight then is Able to Stand. And you will have seen that in the reading there. In verse 11, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 13, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Verse 14, stand therefore. Stand therefore. This morning we spoke about something worth fighting for and we looked at Shama, to whom even a field of lentils was important because it was for God and for God's people that he took his stand there in the middle of that field. Tonight, able to stand. And there is this amazing and wonderful picture in uh, Ephesians 6 where the Apostle Paul uses that that would be familiar to them the fully equipped Roman soldier, ready for the fight. And of course, it, it would have been uh, familiar to the people of Rome and of Ephesus too, uh, during that time of the Roman Empire. And the soldier was equipped for the battleground. And Paul takes these physical uh, pieces of equipment and preparedness and uses them in a spiritual way to illustrate the resources, the spiritual equipment that the Christian has in the battle against Satan and sin. We had that hymn, Who is on the Lord's side and of course we could relate that back both to this morning and to tonight for a Roman uh, to be the soldier uh, to be one of those even if he wasn't a centurion but one of those who had the honor of serving the emperor uh, would be a big thing as of course it is for servicemen today. We uh, think of those in our armed services and uh, they can use the term for queen and country and uh, they therefore on passing out and being ready uh, to serve in the army, the navy or the air force. They are in that position where they are able uh, to have a certain amount of pride in the uniform and in what they do. Now I know that some of you may be pacifists. I can understand that. When I was an atheist, I was a pacifist. And I think I remained a, a pacifist for many years after that. But of course, we can all appreciate that Paul whatever our feelings might be now, we can't actually rewrite history. There have been armed conflicts 
there still are armed conflicts and when we see innocent people suffer uh, surely we think that something should be done about it uh, and, and of course such has been the case even in our own time as well as in those great first and second world wars if you've been on the Falkland Islands in 1982 and been invaded you probably would have been very glad uh, to see someone coming to restore your freedom but whatever your views on that Paul isn't saying whether it was right or wrong for a person to be in the Roman army he is simply describing something that they could see every day and so he uses these pictures so divinely equipped for the battleground able to stand and it is so important that those of us who are Christians recognize that there still is a battleground I do not agree with the idea that Satan is not running around and active I do not believe that we are in Revelation 20 yet and consequently I accept what Peter said uh, that your adversary, the devil, is walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And we mentioned that just a few weeks ago. I believe I also mentioned one of Tozer's phrases to you uh, when he said that some Christians think this world is a playground, but it's not. It's a battleground. And I first heard that phrase from a good friend of mine, now with the Lord, up in Scotland. Abel Clark came and stood with me on the mound, which is like the Speaker's Corner, up there in Edinburgh, uh, with uh, Arthur's seat and the castle uh, behind us. I stood there and preached the gospel with this dear man who had done the same for many years, but by then was not strong enough but he stood and supported me as I preached the gospel and it was one of the phrases that he would often use that this world is not a playground for the Christian but a battleground and uh, at that time I didn't know it was a quote from Tozer divinely equipped for the battleground and able to stand to stand verse 11 the whole armor of God is there so that you are able to stand against the wiles of the devil now I heard an interesting story about the late and much uh, revered uh, preacher uh, Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones and it was said by an American visitor uh, to his church uh, that uh, he went to a service there and Martin Lloyd-Jones was speaking about the wiles of the devil. And of course he was someone who could pack an awful lot in uh, to a sermon, uh, even on just a few words. And he said, I went back a, uh, a year later and Martin Lloyd-Jones was still speaking about the wiles of the devil. Well, I don't think I could manage uh, to do that. But very simply, it does remind us that the devil is, is wily and that he is, as we're told in Genesis chapter 3, he was subtle and he was cunning. And he persuaded Eve to yield to his suggestion to disobey God. And because she was prepared to do that, so did Adam, her husband. And from that, of course, flows what we learn from the gospel. And sin has come into this fallen world. But the Lord Jesus Christ dealt with the question of sin he won the victories we thought this morning at the place called Calvary 
but the wiles of the devil. I say to my Christian friends, beware of his tricks. I've been tricked. I've been fooled by the devil. I have fallen, even as a Christian. And perhaps if we were more honest, and particularly we who were preachers, we did not present the impression that in somehow we are above those dangers. It would be better for us and better for the people that we speak to if we were honest and recognize that we are just as much a target, probably more of a target, than those who do not preach or do not lead churches. But I say to you this evening that the devil is wily. He is cunning. He will, yes, sometimes come as a roaring lion, but as Paul reminded us, he will sometimes come as the angel of light and he will trick you and he will persuade you into thinking uh, that the battle isn't that strong, that the danger isn't that great and therefore you might start to, little by little, be less on your guard against him. And I say to those of you who are not Christians, you have no chance whatsoever of withstanding the devil because the devil, that cunning foe, will have you at his mercy if you are not a Christian. However much you may go to church, you may read the Bible, you may do good things. You cannot be saved without the precious blood of Christ shed for you, shed for me. And my dear friend, if you are not a Christian tonight, then the truth is that you do not have this armour. You do not have the Christian's armour that is here. You do not have the whole armour of God. And you will never be able to withstand the devil. He will just steamroller right off you, over you, and move on. Beware of the devil's tricks. Beware of the devil telling you you are not in danger from him. It's been said that one of the cleverest things the devil ever did was to put out the story that he didn't exist. And probably alongside that, another clever thing that he did was to make you think that he's not a current and ever present danger. He is. But we do thank God that the Lord Jesus has won the victory and therefore the devil is a defeated foe. But a defeated foe lashing around as he knows that his time is short. He is dangerous and therefore you need the whole armour of God. You have to stand. You stand strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, verse 10, but you have to put on the whole armour of God. If you do not have, or you do not, as it were, put on, make use of every part of the armour that is described in this chapter, then you will be in danger. A man without a breastplate can be thrust through in the chest. A man without a helmet can be wounded in the head. The whole armour of God is given to us through the scriptures, through the grace of God, so that we may be able to stand, able to stand. But not only must we beware of his tricks, we have to recognise, verse 13, that there come days, there come situations, there come times, periods in our life when we are in particular danger. 
And so the Apostle in verse 13 speaks of withstanding in the evil day. You know, that could, of course, be taken a little metaphorically and not refer just to a 24-hour period. You may well think that we are living in particular evil days in the United Kingdom at this time. And we could say that perhaps for those of us who have been Christians for many years, that it has seen that uh, times become more evil and it is a harder fight that we face. But there will come particular experiences, particular times in your life when the danger will be greater. Satan will see you when you're tired, when you're weak. Satan will see you when you're particularly vulnerable. Satan will hurl everything at you as a roaring lion. Or he may, as we have thought already, use his wiles to cunningly gain an interest and access into your life and your situation. And so there will be particularly evil days. There will be days when the pressure is so great. We think of our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for their faith in many places and they face evil days and they face an onslaught that could so easily overwhelm them. And we ourselves, in the pressures, and as a pastor and as a preacher, there are particular pressures. And many pastors and preachers have gone under. And therefore, what is there that will help us so that we will not go under? What is there that will help you so that you will not go under? It is being equipped. Being equipped, having the whole armour of God and these things that are mentioned here in the chapter. To have truth, to have righteousness, to have the gospel of peace, the shield of faith and of course the word of God, the sword of the Spirit. To have those things so that we we need not even in thinking of the dangers and of the attacks of the evil one we need not be downcast oh my friend my christian friend tonight if maybe life is particularly difficult for you i say to you i may not be able to help you but there is one to whom you can turn, one who will give back to you the whole spiritual armour and you can put it on again and you can rise from the darkness of an evil day and go on for God because, as we shall see, you're not doing it in your own strength. Any more than Shammah, who we thought about this morning, won the victory in his own strength. It was the Lord that gave him a great victory. The Roman soldier standing there erect and ready for the battle had the might of Rome behind him. You and I as Christians, we have the might of the God of heaven and our Saviour, the Lord Jesus, behind us. We are weak, but he is strong. And we must fight on then. We must be standing when all things seem dark, knowing that the battle will be over, but the light of a glorious day will come, and knowing of a certainty, that victory is secure. Round his standard ranging, we know that victory is secure. So stand against the wiles of a devil. Beware of his tricks. Fight on, stand in an evil day, standing 
when all things seem dark, you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And then finally, at the end of verse 13, and having done all to stand. Having done all to stand. When Shema, who we thought about this morning, when the battle was o over and the bodies of the Philistines lay around him, however weak and tired and no doubt wounded he was, he was able to stand. He had stood and at the end he was able to stand after making every effort having done all to stand and so for the soldier who has stood in the heat of the battle there comes a time when weary though he may be he makes his way to a debriefing perhaps and eventually he appears again before his superiors on the parade ground and he pulls himself erect and he stands the battle is over the victory has been won but having done all he can stand and having done all he can stand if another battle comes and some of the battles that we face as Christians may indeed be heated. They may indeed be long, but neither the heat of the battle nor its length should stop us having done all to stand until that day when we shall stand before our Commander-in-Chief, when we shall see the one with his wounds in his hand and his commendation will be sufficient to make up for all the battles, for all the trials, for all the evil days. And we shall be forever with the Lord. But I want you to see tonight that this is only possible with the armour that God provides we need these things in the following verses this whole armor gird your waist with truth 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 being the belt as it were truth being so essential we need to be sure that we have a full gospel that we have a true gospel, that we're not selling it short. We need to be sure that we're relying upon the truth of God and the certainty that that brings. We need to have the breastplate of righteousness. We ourselves must be right with God. We ourselves must be careful to walk in ways that please him. And we can, of course, know that if we trust Christ, we have his righteousness, his imputed righteousness upon us. And having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, be a poor soldier who didn't have the right footwear so that he could stand in the gospel but he could stand in the battle and we need to have that certainty that we can make a firm stand because we believe and we share that gospel of peace and above all he says take the shield of faith which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and the helmet of salvation you see faith 
is essential to protect you in dark days, in the heat of the battle. The helmet of salvation to protect the head. And there, as the Roman soldier stood there, you couldn't bring a club down on his head. It would be no good throwing rocks at his head because that helmet would keep him safe. And we have that certainty of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Don't be ashamed of the Word of God. Defend that Word. Use it to attack the enemy. There will be those who will tell you, oh, that's only the Bible. We don't want to listen to that. But the Bible will give you comfort. It will give you assurance. It will give you strength. It will help you to withstand the wiles of the devil. And you can use it to the blessing of those who you seek to deliver amidst the heat of the battle. But then it says, praying always. And I remember in my first Bible school, one of the lecturers there was a man called Albert Falais, who had been a missionary in North Africa many, many years ago. And he, in speaking of this passage, he told us how there was one item of the armour that isn't mentioned here or doesn't appear to be mentioned and that was the spear and the spear he said was thrown by the Roman soldier at the beginning of the battle and he said he thought that prayer was the spear but that prayer would be raised and the soldier as he threw the spear would do that as his first uh, method of defence and attack at the beginning of the battle. And that we need to have prayer. We need to pray. We will not be complete, as it were, as a soldier of Christ, unless we have prayer, unless we have that spear. And so that has been a blessing to me over the years to remember that little suggestion given to me all those years again ago. And then in the middle of the verse, 18, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. In verse 19, and he says, for which I am an ambassador in chains. So we know then that Paul was in prison at that time. And of course was actually looking at the soldiers who were guarding him as he wrote these words. And God uses these words. So it is only possible to stand. And having done all to stand. If we use the whole armour that God provides and if we see how vital prayer is. Amen. Now in a little while we're going to uh, sing the hymn or share in the hymn. You can sing it there at home if you like in uh, We Rest on Thee, Our Shield and Our Defender. And during the week I saw a short video that Sam Gordon had used for another church and he's given me permission to use that recording of his comments about this hymn and of a very well-known incident in missionary history. So first of all then we have that short video and then we follow with the hymn We Rest on Thee, Our Shield and our defender. Well folks, I'm very happy to be with you today for your short devotional message. And when I think about it, my mind goes back to a lovely old hymn. It's a hymn that was penned by a lady from Plymouth by the name of Edith Cherry. 
We often sing it to the tune of Finlandia, which was obviously penned by Sibelius many, many years ago. Why do I love this hymn? Well, I love this hymn because of the great truths that I can relate to in my own experience. And indeed of many high points in my own life and ministry, I've often sung this hymn. It goes like this. We rest on thee, our shield and our defender. We go not forth alone against the foe, strong in thy strength, safe in thy keeping tender. We rest on thee, and in thy name we go. Aren't those tremendous words? But then I think of another verse later on in that particular hymn, and it goes like this, and I'm sure many of us can relate to this in our own experience, perhaps even today. We go in faith, our own great weakness feeling, and needing more each day thy grace to know. Yet from our hearts a song of triumph pealing, we rest on thee, and in thy name we go. I'm sure many of you probably realise that hymn is sung by Jim Elliot and his four colleagues there on the banks of the Curari River, right there in the heart of the Amazon rainforest. These young men had a passion, they had an all-consuming desire. It was to reach the most savage tribe in the Ecuadorian rainforest with the life-changing message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They sang those words. Within a matter of hours, they lay dead in the water. They had been speared, brutally butchered. They were murdered. They were cut off, as it were. And yet today, in the heart of the jungle, there is a thriving community of God's dear people. A few years back, it was my tremendous privilege to actually stand there where it all happened. I was actually privileged to meet some of the killers who now today are with the Lord. And you know, it's just so encouraging to realise, dear friends, that come what may, in your life and in mine, whatever may have happened yesterday, whatever lies before us, even tomorrow, in our hour of tremendous need, we can identify with these words, can't we? We go in faith, our own great weakness feeling. That hymn penned by Edith Sherry actually has a biblical foundation. It's a story we don't often think about these days, but it's recorded for us there in 2 Chronicles chapter 14. It revolves around King Asa, who was one of the good kings of Judah, a man of whom the scripture says he did right in the eyes of the Lord. And we read away down that chapter in the 11th verse, these words, it's when Asa called unto the Lord, his God, and this is what he said. He spoke to him as Yahweh, the God of the covenant. Lord, he said, there is no one like you. And that reminds us at the outset, does it not, of the exclusiveness of our great God. There is something incomparable about him. He is staggeringly unique. Lord, he said, there is no one like you to help the powerless against the mighty. Don't you often feel just like that? So weak, so inadequate, so at times ill-prepared. And yet, my friends, in our moments when we feel as if we can never do it, our God is there to help us. He went on to pray like this, Help us, O Lord our God. And here's the little phrase, for we rely on you, or perhaps we trust in you, or maybe even, according to the hymn, we rest in you. And then he goes on to say, we rest in you, and in your name we have come against this vast army. You see, my dear friends, I have no idea what you will be facing in future days, but what I do know today is this that when we have the Lord on our side, one with God is always a majority. And because of Calvary, and because of his faithful intercession for us now at the Father's right hand, we are guaranteed to be on the winning team, if not today, certainly 
in the glorious eternity that stretches before us. He goes on to say, O Lord, you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. And so, my dear friends, whatever the situation you're wrestling with right now, let me put it like this. You can do what Asa did. You can do what Jim Elliot and his four colleagues did there on the banks of that sandy beachhead and say and sing these words. We rest on thee, our shield and our defender. I just love the final stanza because it is echoes of heaven and of home and of the ultimate victory. Let me share it with you. We rest on thee our shield and our defender. Thine is the battle, thine shall be the praise. When passing through the gates of pearly splendour, victors, we rest with thee through endless days. May God bless you. Amen.
great hymn. Now just before we pray, just a couple of announcements. On Tuesday at 7.45 on our Zoom equipment, David Herring will be leading us in the Bible study before we have our time of prayer. On Thursday, if the present uh, lockdown against churches is uh, it continues, it may not. Uh, representations have been made by many religious leaders to the government. Uh, but if it continues, uh, we will have another private prayer session. We normally do have a home prayer session at 10 on a Thursday and uh, that will uh, be done on Zoom uh, from the chapel so that those who can't get there uh, can join in private prayer. But of course I'm not uh, uh, permitted uh, to, uh, to lead that. It will be a private prayer session and if you want to come to the chapel to pray you can uh, but if not uh, you will be able to join us at home through the Zoom link. And next Lord's Day we will return to our studies in the book of the Acts and we shall be in chapter 11. Let's pray. Father, thank you for helping us today to look into your word and thank you for these few simple thoughts that we have had tonight. We thank you that the Lord has given provision for us to be fully equipped to face spiritual battles. And Lord, with the assurance that one day those battles will be over and we shall stand before our commander in chief. We give you thanks for that and praise you for your blessings to us. In the Saviour's name. Amen.